scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer The one who is able to help men You are Ebenezer oh. You are Ebenezer my testimony you are Ebenezer the lifter of men you are Ebenezer sing it one time with understanding because he's lifting you you are Ebenezer you are Ebenezer. Father, speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. May I request in the name of Jesus that you pay very close attention to the things we'll be learning. I really respect the vision and intelligence behind a conference like this. These are dedicated moments when I sat back just listening to all the professionals speak and Reverend Sam was just giving me a hint as to who was talking, you know. I said, my God, can you imagine sitting here for a day, two, three days under this atmosphere of spirituality and intelligence? When Christ is revealed, he's revealed as the power of God and he's revealed as the wisdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm teaching very briefly. I, I really see it more of a training than a teaching just to lend my contribution to what God is doing. The power to continue. The power to continue. The power to continue. We'll be examining the principles that make for sustainable impact. The key word sustainable. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. Hallelujah. The Bible says, better, will we have it projected? All right. So it says, let's read together, please. One to read. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Just the A part. One more time. Better is the end of a thing. The Bible mentions two very important words, one beginning and the other end. One beginning and the other end. 
we're not teaching on ending my focus is on beginning and continuing i found out from scripture through the power of mentorship and from experience that as far as advancement is concerned there are two dimensions of power we need the power to begin and the power to continue and the dynamics of accessing this power is totally different the power to begin anything and the power to continue in job chapter 8 and verse 7 job chapter 8 and verse 7 the bible says job 8 and verse 7 do we have it there it says though thy beginning was small yet thy later end should it didn't say will it's an expectation if you walk in keeping with certain principles based on god's pattern that it is all right when your beginning is small but it says your later end should greatly increase it doesn't guarantee it will he's saying it should increase are we together so everyone has a beginning to begin means to start to begin means to initiate to begin means to ignite the process revelation chapter 1 and verse 18 the concept of beginning is so powerful that god names himself after that concept he calls himself alpha and omega then he calls himself the beginning and the end hallelujah new king james version if we can have it please genesis 26 i'll begin my reading from verse 13. this is really where i'm teaching from genesis 26 from verse 13. just needed to put that foundation that it is important to understand how to begin and to continue let's read together ready one to read and the man began to prosper uh-huh and continued prospering until he became very prosperous just hang on we'll read to 16 but we'll take it carefully the bible says the man began began means it was not his experience before that time are we together now this is good news it means i can begin to begin means to capture into your space an experience that once was not your experience before that time that means I can start something that was not there I can bring into my space through knowledge a reality that was not captured in my experience it is very powerful men can begin men can begin is the privilege that God gave us men can begin I can begin to make progress I can begin to prosper I can begin to know God so just because I'm deficient of a reality or a dimension does not mean that is the end of me i can begin to do things right i can begin beginning is very powerful because it means beginning means the end of hopelessness are we together now and the man began to prosper began to prosper now how many times he tried we do not know but one thing for sure is the bible tells us that his prosperity and his exploits had a date for its start and the man began for someone this is the conference where you begin to make notable constructive advance in your life in the name of jesus christ every human on earth has what we call a birth date a birth date means when you manifested in this realm not when you started your formation everybody's age is plus at least seven months eight months we don't count that we count the day we saw you not from a machine the day you manifested physically is when we begin your counting is that true yes we call it a bad date and from that time on every time of the year you commemorate knowing that i am i was born but i am still alive the day you die you are not the one who talks about it someone else will say finally this person has come to an end in as much as we know living in this physical realm is concerned listen very carefully the bible says the man began to prosper and you would think the bible would just say he prospered 
But then the Bible says, and continued prospering. Now that is a very serious message. He began to prosper. Why would the Bible now capture the fact that that man who began to prosper is still at it till now? There is no guarantee that because he began, he would continue. This is a very powerful information. The man began to prosper. And after 10 years, he's still at it. The man began to move forward. Statistic tells us that more than 80% of businesses, churches that start die within the first year. Is that true? So don't you downplay this issue of continuation. I'm interested in the continuing part. The Bible says he began to prosper and he continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Let's finish up to 16. 14 now. The Bible says, For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and a great number of servants. Now, a problem was about to be introduced to his life as a result of continuing. That problem was not there when he started. But his consistency was leading him to learn something. Pay attention. <laughs> The Bible says some people were now invited into his world by reason of his results. The Bible says so on account of his consistency, the Philistines envied him. 15. Now the Philistines had stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father and they had filled them with earth we're reading to 16 and Abimelech said to Isaac go away from us why for you are much mightier than we may the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ so the Bible shows us clearly here that it takes a separate dynamics to continue as it takes to start. That it is usually very easy. All you need is determination and to work in keeping with a few principles and then push with faith and you can start. The beautiful thing about starting is that accuracy is not required. Determination and motion is all that is needed to start. Are we together now? Yes. You are not given the liberty to criticize anybody for starting. Accuracy and perfection and mastery is not needed when you start. There are people who drive. Are we still together? There are people who drive and when they begin their process of learning to drive and then now driving on the road, they put something L. Now, no matter what the person is doing on the road, by reason of that L, it already discourages you from saying you're not doing well. He already told you, I'm moving, but I'm a learner. You do not expect accuracy or perfection or flawlessness from a starter. In fact, you encourage the person for having the audacity to overcome that inertia. Is that true? But remaining remaining and sustaining your result will require it, it will be foolish and childish to criticize and fight a young man or a young boy for starting anything uh -uh. the bible says when he started the philistines were watching him they were not concerned about his starting but when he continued invited or not they came into his space he was now managing things that he did not face when he was starting many people may have the power to start but the stamina to continue requires a set of dynamics that until you are taught you may give up on the way are we together the bible talked about moses when god motivated him and engraced him to go and meet pharaoh he went and i'm not sure what he expected but he left with such embarrassment and sadness and the bible says he continued to go to pharaoh again and again 
and again and again it took stamina for him to be able to bring the nation of israel out of egypt even though it was god sending him just because god is before you does not guarantee that you will start and continue just by default there are laws and my assignment is to be able to guide us by the spirit because every one of us here i presume that we are leaders in some respect so we've started something there is a vision there is a ministry there is a business and many of you by reason of your working in keeping with the principles you have been taught you are now rising consistently let me inform you that there is a threshold in success that when you reach certain things will start happening in your life that it is important for you to know in biology there are children for as long as their children maybe under 12 13 there are certain things that don't happen to them when they get to 11 12 13 their parents now would sit them and start telling them there is a transition in your life is that true because by reason of your consistency in growth you are now going to be facing certain challenges psychologically biologically that you must be prepared for if a child is not prepared for that phase there are usually a plethora of catastrophes because now the person is not managing failure you have to be taught to manage success most people do something about failure alone they don't do something about great success the burden of being consistently successful is by far greater than the burden of failure and the man began to prosper and he continued prospering and the bible says and the philistines envied him hallelujah Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Let's talk about continuing. Proverbs 24 and verse 10. The Bible says, If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity. I draw a lot of inspiration from athletes and um, when you watch people run marathon there is the long distance race called marathon where they have kilometers to cover could be around a circle or just across you know a predefined region now when they start usually there would be not less than 50 people some already know they will not finish is that true some want to give their strength a chance to see how far it can go but there are some who start with the intention of continuing and finishing when the gun is shot everyone some begin to laugh at themselves as they start they know that they are not prepared to finish but in the midst of that crowd you will see a few very slim usually tall deep fellows who don't talk to anyone they start moving many times they are usually not in front because they, they have mastered that thing they are somewhere they are not behind but they are not in front they know that the dynamics will change starting is easy someone will enjoy the 10 minutes of knowing that I'm leading and the one who will actually win knows that this man is wasting his time the fact that you are obsessed about winning at the beginning or being first it tells that professional that you are not even going to go far because there is a skill to it everyone starts and then eventually something called exhaustion exhaustion is a product of time and diligence not laziness you can't be exhausted when you are not even doing anything and gradually their pace and their energy begins to deplete are we learning now and you find out that a few people now start thinking do I continue? Do I stay? What is the risk of staying? What is the risk of continuing? A time will come, your mind won't give you a chance to think again. Your body will just say, I'm exhausted. Stop. And people stop with all kinds of skills. Some fall, some just halt, some are angry, some even faint. And yet those few, by the time they get to maybe midway, the dynamics change. You will notice their breathing will change you will notice that not they cannot even turn to the left 
as much as turning to the left can distract them and finally they run and by the last round you will be surprised to see they have they've stored energy that you never imagined they would look like they wouldn't make it and then they would run and win and you see them stand breathing just take a cup of water or so and they are fine i draw a lot of inspiration there because it shows me how people run this race in life and destiny there are people who start ministry as though it's going to happen for one month and they will rest they are happy and excited they've been burning with messages mysteries after mysteries one i mean they are itching to share everything and after two months they've exhausted the messages they open the bible and it looks like it's just a white sheet of paper there is nothing written there again the stamina to continue comes from four channels the stamina to continue comes from four channels are we together that means beginning your destiny your ministry your business and so on and so forth that is commendable but that is not enough guarantee that you will continue and you will last because as you remain in any system the requirements on you become greater there is a greater requirement of perfection there are things people would forgive you about yesterday but they won't forgive the tomorrow's version of you they expect look at moses moses for his argument with god at a certain level moses was prohibited from entering the promised land zechariah's mouth was shut because as a priest who had had deep encounters with god he shouldn't be asking the angel that question and he said i will shut your mouth the same question mary asked and the angel answered her look how unfair that was but he was dealing with people at two different dimensions you can do something a starter did and god will, god will honor that person and let him go and punish you in a way that you will be surprised because to whom much is given much is expected are we learning now this is very powerful it takes stamina to continue stamina to remain stamina to lead your field stamina to continue to make consistent exploits number one the first channel where the stamina and the strength for continuity comes from is humility write this humility you want to continue you need humility because let me tell you this results are deceptive results are deceptive they flatter results have the ability to peg your productivity at a level failure can inspire you to get up and start again but you you will be surprised to know the level of impedance that your current result can pause to your advancing someone shout no way. no way humility what is humility victory over the pride of life the pride of life is the self-glorification that comes on account of obvious results if you don't have results people will insult you for being proud but if you have results it seems to create some justification let me tell you this ask anyone who has lasted in the realm of success ask your pastor ask any man of god you know they will tell you the first skill you need to manage that realm is a delicate realm when you stand on that platform of success is so slippery if you are not taught the art of standing there you will fall can i tell you look at this everybody watch me if i fall from here the injury is minimal but if i fall from here i most likely may lose my life let me tell you what pride does pride accelerates your rising in your mind so that your fall will be very significant the bible says to not exalt yourself more highly is someone learning 
the skill that keeps people to continue number one humility a time will come in your life where everything will be shouting your results and it's not wrong what is humility the unashamedness to acknowledge God as the basis for all that you are and all that you do do you know the higher you rise the more inconveniencing it will be to step back and allow Jesus to be seen because um, like Reverend Sam was sharing you can imagine sharing his background and all of that and most of us share similar stories chances are excellent that when God begins to lift you there is a point to prove to naysayers there is a point to prove to those who vowed that you will never rise there is a point to prove to people who are expectantly waiting for your fall so chances are excellent that you get distracted proving that point that you forget that we only rise because there is a hand lifting us is someone learning humility james chapter 4 from verse 6 james chapter 4 from verse 6 thank you jesus james chapter 4 but he gives more grace therefore he says god resisted the proud but he gives grace to the humble this is a very powerful kingdom mystery for continuity that i learned in my own life and i keep praying all the time that god would grant me grace can i tell you it takes a lot of effort and participation to remain humble don't mind people who say it's easy. They've not, it's easy to be humble when you have nothing. Huh. When the nations sing your praise, it will take intention to remain humble. Is that true? Yes. Because there are a number of us here that God probably brought us to help us. You are already marking time. Because your results, thank God for the little you are beginning to see. But not knowing that God wants to measure a thousand cubits again. But pride is already distracting you. Pride can flatter. Pride can distract. It's important to receive the applause of people. But you must know when it has gone beyond its, its allowance. And by yourself, create systems that manage it. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. Humility. You want to continue? Your stamina and your staying power will be derived from your ability to be and to remain humble. This I have learned. Ask anyone who has lasted in business in ministry and all of that you find out that behind their sustaining impact and results is a life of humility now let me tell you what pride is not pride does not mean um when you acknowledge the blessings of god and you subscribe to the blessings and the privileges that the privileges that come at your level and as you are rising that is not pride i need to say this because mediocres call anything higher than them pride anything higher than them they call it pride so if i take water from this bottle instead of pure water to somebody based on his level it is pride and his rights to him the only problem is i am not him are we together for someone maybe flying a business class or flying a private jet, he can call it pride. But you see, it is relative to your realm of achievement. It is relative to your realm of reality. We have to balance this. Are we together? Yes. As humble as Jesus was and is, he was not the one rocking the boat, taking him to the other side. The Bible says he was sleeping. Justifiably so. Because he's the one doing the casting of the demons. He's the one doing all of this. He said, you guys, do the other work and let me rest. So we have to 
uh, let me tell you something we will we'll get there shortly you have to sustain the courage to conquer the emotional blackmail that people bring when they do not find explanation as to your growth they will bring all kinds of reasons and call everything pride if god has blessed you rest in the fact that he has helped you don't punish yourself in the name of humility so i'm telling you what humility is there are some things i will never do you will not find me washing my clothes it's a waste of my time it's not it's not about there is god has given someone a vision to be a dry cleaner he will do it better it will save my time there is no amount of preaching that will make me go. it's not that i cannot do it my time means a lot more i rather invest that time in doing something constructive are we together now but it is fine and honest for we have to acknowledge the fact that pride destroys the danger with pride is not just that state is the person who will fight you the person who fights you when you are proud is god if the devil fights you you go to god to help you but if god fights you do you meet a man of god to help you what oil do you put on your head to fight you when god is the one fighting may the lord grant us grace to be humble in the name of jesus christ number two very quickly the stamina to continue comes from your ability to continue learning to continue learning and to contend for improvement we continue in this kingdom we continue our exploits we are sustained i think one of the facilitators here made that statement to continue improving and to keep learning today's excellence will certainly be tomorrow's mediocrity and you have to learn and reinvent yourself and grow and stretch let me show you a scripture that really really purged me and gave me the ability to keep pressing as though i did not know anything first corinthians 8 and verse 2 first corinthians 8 and verse 2 the second key we are discussing is the passion to keep learning the passion to contend for learning and improvement first corinthians 8 and verse 2 please read with me if you can see it ready read if anyone thinks that he knows anything he says he knows nothing yet as he ought to know you know masters and champions by their passion to learn more thank god for the things i know but god must grant you the grace to know how to learn what you don't know is a grace that must be given to you from God to pursue knowledge strategic knowledge in areas where you do not know let me give you an instance for instance um, for those of you who are in ministry ministry in the north teaches you a lot about morality and character but it does not teach you so much about structure and administration in fact most pentecostal circles do not understand structure and administration they understand the ministry of the holy spirit and impact but most pentecostal charismatics do not last because they are not mentored to understand the power of systems and structures that's why you find ministries like the anglican catholic church and all of these orthodox circles that sometimes we laugh at they may not be as uh impactful as we want from a spiritual standpoint respectfully speaking now but i can tell you their structure will last no individual's failure or success can destroy the structure the structure is greater than any individual but in pentecostal and charismatic circles even one person's mistake can can tilt the ministry for many years the ministry is a merciless reflection of the individual he's if he improves you will see if he backslides you will see so i made up my mind that in addition to learning and understanding the ministry of the holy spirit and other things i would have to submit myself to understand administration to understand structure if i truly desire to last and let me tell you 
this is an area in life and ministry that does not come free you will pay for it with humility you will pay for it financially you it will sting your ego you will have to sit down and start learning afresh maybe this is already a word for someone you are wondering why you cannot expand beyond a certain limit even though you know that intrinsically you have the value to offer your structure is as powerful as your gift because a great oil in a small vessel will still not serve it says borrow vessels borrow not a few so that the gift that is within can find expression you must commit yourself to strategic learning in genesis chapter 1 and verse 16 the bible says that god made two great lights please say two great lights he says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night then he says he made the stars also he made two great lights you must contend for knowledge please let me challenge every one of us especially those of us who god has helped by his mercy i was very humbled and touched when you know reverend sam was just mentioning the things that he does you know just coming and sneaking into koinonia we're discussing that earlier on in his office it takes a lot of humility for that to happen but you see let me tell you this never get embarrassed when it has to do with knowledge when i came and i sat down here the few minutes that i spent you can't imagine the things that i learned just listening to them and as he was telling me this man is this this man is that when i sit before people who know what i do not know i don't contribute i learn for many of you you contribute even in the midst of ignorance when it is very clear that you have no idea there's no result to show don't don't feel this is training i told you i told you earlier on this is training don't feel embarrassed you must discipline yourself to keep quiet when you don't know it's cheaper than embarrassing yourself and recycling your pain and ignorance again and again someone say knowledge can I tell you this? Any kind of knowledge will not bless you. It has to be specific to the area of darkness. You must be able to write the areas of ignorance in your life. How do you know the areas of ignorance? By the absence of results. Darkness is a clue that you need light there. Thank God for darkness. Because without darkness, you cannot know where light should go. Are we together? examine the areas of darkness in your life i may be doing well in ministry but what of your finances you find out that this finance thing is it doesn't seem to open up you are not the first to do ministry you are not the first to do business find out can i tell you here is the formula go to them that sell and buy god will never never leave his church without people that sell i'm not just speaking with respect to ministry alone everything you are looking for there are those who have it and there are those who have it enough to sell it the only thing is that you don't buy it with money let me tell you the currency you use to buy from them that sell humility meekness endurance you have to endure their personalities to receive that which god has given them you cannot want to be taught at your own terms a student does not learn at his own terms that's a lazy student who will not go far adaptation is proof of honor you have to endure a lot when you are determined to learn especially from people who have results if you are elijah endure elijah's temper and learn what it takes to succeed in the prophetic because although he's a temperous man he still is the one carrying the anointing and you would think because of his temper god will take away the anointing you endure it hmm. it's amazing how god works isn't it yes are we learning this is very powerful many people want to learn they want to grow but they desire to be spoon fed bring it to me i won't pursue just bring it let me tell you this the proof of passion is pursued every time you are passionate about something you stand up and go and look for the answer why is this thing not working 
Why is ministry not working? Why is business not working? Through desire, Proverbs 18 and verse 1, a man having separated himself, the Bible says he seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. There are routines of learning that I must honor every day, otherwise sleep, no matter how tired I am, is an is a covenant of knowledge. I will not go to bed until and unless, and there is no excuse. A covenant is a non-emotional binding. Listen, you intend to grow and you challenge yourself. Looking at the weather, waiting, looking at your appetite and all of that notwithstanding. There are times I return late and tired, but I know I am bound by this covenant of growth. I went up by revelation. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.